Here we have a forensic comparison microscope. This is also called a bullet comparison microscope. It can be used for looking at, looking at bullets and cartridges. It's a low power version, so any type of forensic evidence can be used to, for comparing whenever you're looking at using the low power objectives. These are the uh, objectives. You have to make sure that whatever power objective you're turning on one side matches the same ob power objective on the other. The particular objectives are 0.8x, 1x, 2x, 3x, and 4.8x. All of that is adjusted with this knob. This particular version has two photography ports. The back port is for SLR cameras. This is the SLR ad adapter. On the top is a T adapter. This is another version of a T adapter. Depending on which type of camera you're using, you're going to have to have the T adapter to match that camera. If you've got a Nikon camera, you're going to have to have a Nikon T adapter. So you'd re you, re you, you would re take this one off and replace it with the Nikon one, or a Canon, or whatever. At this point, the body of the camera will lock directly to the top. Here we have a Canon SLR Digital. This particular model is an EOS Rebel XS. You could use Nikon or whatever brand. The point is that, is that it's a SLR camera and a digital. We have a Canon T adapter. This is a T adapter. We have the proper T adapter to fit the, the camera. At this point, we pull the light diversion knob out and now we can take photography with our DSL camera. I'll cap this port. You want to keep them capped so you don't get dust in them. We have another port at the front. That port is for video. This is a C-mount adapter. At this point, these threads will connect directly to a C-mount camera. This is a photo port. So some types of cameras will, will slide right into this opening. In particular, there's a lot of USB digital cameras that will slide into this port and connect directly to a laptop. When you're not taking photography or video, you want to close this light diversion knob so that all of your illumination is devoted to the eyepieces. This particular head has the typical interpupillary distance. It also has a diopter adjustment. The diopter adjustment is so when you get this eye into focus, if this eye is not in focus, you can adjust it so that both eyes are in focus at the same time. This microscope comes with a wide field 10x. The 22 is the field width. That's a 22 millimeter field width. The eyeglass symbol is for a high eye point so that somebody wearing eyeglasses could use this without, without having to remove their eyeglasses. The microscope also comes with a pair of 20 power oculars.
very simple to remove and replace. The 20 power eyepieces will double your magnification versus the 10 power eyepieces. This is considered the bridge. The objectives, the objectives are located in, in this point, in this part, and are adjustable. The light paths enter the objectives into the bridge, and at this point, we have the ability to to change what we're looking at. First of all, we can turn the knob one direction and the whole image <coughs> is only of this side. Or we could turn the knob the other direction and the whole image is only of this side. You can also have an overlapping where the image is cut and you can also, and on that cut line, here we have a specimen of a bullet casing. So you could show half of one and half of the other if you turn the knob a certain direction, to like, for instance, to the left a little more. You might only show one, one quarter of one and three quarters of the other. Or you could turn it to the overlapping, and when you overlap, you see both images. When you do the overlapping, you might want to put on a color filter on one side. These come with red and green filters. They can slide into place. This particular microscope is, is good because we've got a very high intensity illumination system in the back. We have another model that has that illumination only in the bottom and it's not nearly as bright. This is very bright, <clears throat> very clear, very white light. I'm turning on the back fiber optic lights. Now I'm turning off our LEDs. These are the LED lights. This particular knob <coughs> focuses the light. These are fully adjustable so that you can point directly at the specimen. Fiber optic lights just take some adjustment so that you can get this, the specimen properly eliminated. Access to the bulb is through this door. This is a 150 watt bulb, 24 volts. On the other side, is another 150 watt bulb. Gives us very bright illumination directly through these fiber optic cables and to our specimen.
This knob focuses, but it focuses both at the same time. Both stages move up and down. These knobs focus, but independently. So looking into the eyepieces, you have to see that each specimen is in focus. And you adjust both of these knobs to do that. It's usually easier to get an object in focus whenever you turn back your magnification. Something like a 0.8x would be the best to get something in focus in it first. You might take a business card <coughs> and something with a piece of paper, something written on a piece of paper and focus on it first because you're not sure the, the focal distance. You may need to be up, or you may need to be down. Take some trial and error. And if you're looking at a very small specimen, it's a little bit hard to immediately get the, to find that location. Once you've found your general vicinity of where you need to be, then you can put on your specimen. These stages move in the X and Y direction. They also have readouts. This particular one is 0 to 50 millimeters. They are also tiltable stages. These stages can be removed with this knob. And the stages are rotatable. Three hundred and sixty degree rotatable with a marking for every degree. 